Okay, I think we're on. Yes, are we on? We are on. We will let people join. Uh, yep, I believe we are. Here we go. Finally. <laughs> So we are already 60 people. Connected. Okay, so they're all signing in then. They were all waiting for more than one hour. <laughs> sorry, sorry, people. Welcome. There's always a technical difficulty. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. But it's, it's supposed to be so easy and it's always a... Uh... Mm. With technology oh, comes challenge. Technology brings challenges. Yeah. I hope we will have some friends from Australia because I know for them it's very early. Even more if they had to wait. Sorry, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's very difficult to find a, a correct timing for all these continents. UK, it's USA. not so difficult if you remember about time changing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wait two minutes and we will start. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aliona, I cannot remember if um, uh, people who have not sent the registration before we start can join. Uh, it depends uh, which uh, settings I did. Setting you did, yes. Okay. If it's how... only by registration, you need to approve them to be able to uh, join. If no, they can. Everyone can join. I know, but it's okay. I can accept. I still have one to accept. Okay. Yes, yes. But you will see it online in, in this list if you need to accept some. Ah, okay, okay. Just sometimes refresh the page in case. I don't know how I can refresh this page, but okay. So I think we can start. Okay. <laughs> It's already, uh, for me, it's already nine and four minutes. So uh, before starting, I would like to say sorry to everyone. We are a bit late for some of you and we are in correct timing for others. It's my mistake because I forgot the summer uh, changing we had here in Europe. So uh we are a bit late now and for some other people we are on time so sorry and how we say in french uh we learn by mistake so next time i will write something on a flyer i will check if there is a changing time during the weekend or not and uh, <laughs> we we will start i will introduce our speakers but before <laughs> introducing them i just would like to uh, make some points more clear. Uh, tonight, it's a round table between Chihuahua passionate people. We are not here to teach you something. We are not here to tell you that there is only one true version of something. It's just a discussion between um, friends or uh, new friends <laughs> and future big friends. And um, it's not a seminar, it's not a webinar, it's just a discussion. And I have already read and seen some people saying, oh, you will speak only about faults. It's uh, a bit sad to focus about faults. Why doing that? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, tonight, we are not tonight or this afternoon, depending where you are. We will not take a picture of a chihuahua and start to point all the faults and to teach you to focus on that. But it's important and we have to keep in mind that some people are um, just beginning into this breed. And even if you are into this breed for a long time, it's always good to refresh our spirits and to 
have an open vision and open mind, open mind uh, our brains to see what our friends, colleagues uh, think about some uh, points. And the points that we will speak tonight are the weights in the Chihuahua breed. Then we will go to the Molera, Fontanelle, and we will uh, speak about teeth. It's how it's supposed to be, but as I, uh, as I have said, it's a discussion. So we will see. So before introducing them, I think it could be nice if you can one by one, just quickly introduce yourself, say from which country you are, and uh, yeah, something brief, but just to say hello to our uh, people. Maybe girl first. Paula? Oh, <laughs> hello. I'm Paula Martinez. I'm from Mexico City. I've been in Chihuahuas for 20 something years, 25 years, I believe. Um, I've had other breeds too, but um, Chihuahuas are always like my passion. I've been, um, I've been um, in all America, USA, Mexico, and Central and South America. My mentors in the breed have been very important to me. I've always been learning and I always will be continuing learning about the breed. Um, Billy is one of my mentors, Erica, Lanasa, and Peggy Hackleton in her time. And that is it. We will try, we always try to make the breed better yeah, and, and do everything nice. And we will learn more of you during this discussion. Aliona? Yes. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I need to clarify my position because by um, Italian Canal Club, as judge, I uh, had to uh, ask uh, approval to represent um, my country <laughs> as a judge. But today, because of time issue and uh, so on, I'm not speaking as a judge. I'm speaking as a breeder, as exhibitor, and as a person. So it's my personal opinion in our discussion. I uh, fell in love uh, in breed in uh, 2010. It's my first dog ever, and I dreamt about dogs since I was a child, but I was able to get my first dog when I already grew up. <laughs> uh, I started my kennel in Ukraine under Ukrainian Kennel Club, uh, and I moved to Italy since uh, four years. So now we are resident in uh, Italy and continue our kennel. We were lucky uh, to move it a little bit before, but uh, also part of my dogs and my family stayed there when everything started. And thanks everything <laughs> universe, we were able to bring everyone and everything here now. Uh, I uh, did a lot of trips <laughs> as exhibitor all around Europe and Great Britain as well a few times. Uh, uh, my dogs, uh, I'm lucky maybe because honestly in Ukraine we had no mentors and this is a problem. So I uh, did my own mistakes and I learned it on my own mistakes. But I would like it to get some very interesting uh, basic bloodlines to, to, to have a good foundation base. And uh, now I have uh, champions, international champions, champions of 10 uh, and more countries, uh, veteran world winners. Uh, what for me, it's very important because it shows also that um, all dogs, they're still with us and they're still showing their qualities. Um, so this is Thank my you, position for today. Thank you. Clive from UK. OK. So I've been in the breed for about 28 years. It's um, been a lot of, um, a lot of it has been 
through pure love of this breed. I just started off as pets, moved from the breeding to the exhibiting to the judging. They're, they're the most beautifulest breed in the world. I mean, nowadays I only seem to show the veterans, but the veterans are still very beautiful as well. I still have a lot of respect for this breed. I love it when people, newcomers, come into the breed and wanting to learn and wanting to follow the paths of everybody else. I just think this is just the best breed ever. And that is my final bit on that, yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Clive. And uh, last but not least, from America, I'm very, very touched to have him because uh, as I told him before, I I don't know him personally, but uh, we, we are friends on Facebook for 12 years. It's not nothing. And uh, I really uh, admire, admire him and all the good uh, things he's sharing on his page about the breed. And uh, Paula, Paula, you are lucky to can call him a mentor. But even just by social media, I have learned a lot of things. And this, as I told him, I have discovered a lot of very good doggy books so I'm very pleased to welcome Billy Miller. Billy, if you can introduce yourself, please. Um, hi, I'm Billy Miller, for those that don't know me, and I live in Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States. Um, I started in the breed, I want to say, in the early 1980s. Um, and primarily, once again, I did purchase a show dog, but my main goal was just to have a great pet. I was raised in a house with other breeds and I always wanted a Chihuahua um, from that first little dog. And she wasn't very good. Um, wasn't one of my better animals quality wise, but I was hooked. The one thing she did have was an amazing temperament and a huge heart that, uh, you know, the heart of a lion. She was this little tiny dog that just loved life and um, really made me fall in love with the breed. And I spent after that little dog, years uh, breeding my own dogs, becoming a handler and showing chihuahuas for others. Uh oh. Wait, they're yeah. micro. Billy, Billy, you're I'm muted. You got <laughs> yeah. me? Yes. And then I joined uh, one of my mentors, Melanie Newell, Bayard Chihuahuas, in starting to breed with her. And later, uh, my best friend in life, Erica Lanassa, and my husband, actually, when I met him, joined us in our. Uh, you know, effort to, you know, make a better mousetrap, so to speak, and breed a better Chihuahua. Um, I still have Chihuahuas, and I can't imagine my life without them. I think, you know, uh, it's not about showing for me. I just love the breed. There's nothing better than to sit around and watch Chihuahuas interact with one another. Thank you so much. So we have four passionate Chihuahua people with us tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. So we will start to speak about the weight in the breed, uh, just to, to make it quickly clear. In the FCI standard, we have a limit size of three kilos. And on the Kennel Club and AKC standard, we spoke about six pounds with around 2.7 kilos. So slightly smaller, slightly um, not smaller. Uh, Less weight less weight than yeah. we have in the FCI standard, we are 300 grams more generous. <laughs> yeah. So um, first of all, we will speak a, a bit about breeding, about showing. My first question that I would like to ask you, is there a minimal or a maximal weight in your country for breeding? No. Or, Paula? No, here in Mexico, we don't have a minimum. No. We don't have a minimum. Um, we do have a lot of bigger dogs right now, which I don't know why, um, judges aren't doing the job of the FCI standard to, um, weigh them. And there, I think the problem is that right now the, um, the weight is, um, over because of of the judges not stepping up and doing what they're supposed to do, what the standard says. 
I personally, when I breed, I since I have the U.S. is just over the border, I breed for FCI and to be able to show in AKC. So I have a double job. <laughs> I have to do a standard, a, a mix of mix of the standard, which is not very different, but you the weight is over here in Mexico in FCI it's 300 grams which is a lot for a little chihuahua so i have to uh breed smaller dogs or well under 6 pounds and, and that's without, what I without regarding dog shows uh are are uh, do you have in your in your head in your mind uh, a minimal weight for your females or not a minimal weight, I would say it would be like a little bit over two kilos. Okay, gotcha. I, I ask it to you. Two kilos. A small bitch, I am terrified to breed. I am. I've known of some that have been free whelpers. You never know. And you have a big bitch and you have to do a c-section and complications and everything so i don't know if it's genetics or, or what it is but i don't have a minimal well i do have a minimal it's two kilos okay. to breed I, I i i start to ask about this restriction because for example here in switzerland we cannot use a female under two kilos and we cannot use a male under 1.8 kilos Interesting. Oh. See, yeah. the United States uh, at one time, which might send people aghast, I believe that, you know, standards through the years have changed, obviously. And in the United States, at one point, um, they actually allowed the long coat to weigh more many, many <clears throat> years ago. In my lifetime, when I started showing, the standard said two to four pounds preferred, two to four pounds um, preferred, meaning if all else is equal, um, go for the one that's two to four um, if you're comparing dogs. I mean, yeah. And I think as a breeder, it's hard. Um, my mentor taught me a valuable lesson. I mean, one of her great lines was even mice have babies. Um, so she has bred smaller ones. And oh, I remember years ago, and I've told the story many a time, there was a famous terrier judge and she only judged a few toy breeds, Manchester Terriers and Chihuahuas. And we had two chihuahuas entered. Uh, well, they were both very nice, but one was was quite better than the other. And she chose to reward the larger dog and said to my mentor as she handed the ribbon, I was showing the littler one that was better, um, that she chose her because she felt she was breedable. And uh, Melanie was very quick to let the judge know, your job isn't to determine that. The breeder's job determines that. Um, you know, uh, they're both within this, you know, area of range. Well, the one is beautiful, but she's just too small to breed. And um, that was back before you had cell phones where you could video everything. But while the little under, slightly under three pound bitch, maybe three pounds, tiny, was giving birth, she actually was on the phone with me laughing because the puppies were very, very easily were born within a few hours. And that within that same time period, the sister who ended up being much bigger as an adult, um, so she was probably sitting at six pounds, five and some pounds, um, she actually required a C-section. So the bigger dog ended up going to the vet for the section and the littler bitch um, had puppies. Um, but here I would say, you know, we definitely, my personal preference that has nothing to do with judging or the breed standard, you know, I always am happy when they're sitting above that four pound range. Um, that being said, when we've had beautiful bitches and they happen to be smaller than that, um, I've had smaller bitches free well. Um, so I don't like to say what's true is always true for the bigger dog because you have things like genetic issues like uterine, uterine inertia. Um, uh, I think it's a pelvic size. Absolutely. 
And I think those issues come into play. So sometimes those smaller bitches are very breedable. And I just think each breeder needs to make their mind up what they're comfortable doing. Uh, my hands are not big, but but they're not the best at pulling out puppies. Um, I learned how to do it because I had to when I was helping assist with whelping. Um, whenever a puppy would be suck, stuck and Erica was there, that puppy was out in seconds because her little hands, she just knew how to, I guess maybe from being a woman and actually being a mom and having children, she sort of understood this process a little better than me. And she very quickly would say, um, that puppy is stuck, let me, and she would find a way to turn the puppy or move the cord that was blocking the puppy from coming out. And I mean, I can't think of the, the nights where we were running to the vet and I was driving and she quickly, we would think we had a section on the way and on the way to the vet, Erica would quickly figure out how to get that puppy out. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of it, maybe I was a little, we were a little more trusting because she was really good at that job. So we were willing to breed those smaller bitches and hope that, you know, we didn't have issues. Um, I in find our, in the in night- our standard here, Billy, in our Pardon standard me? here. In in how we're standard here in the in the can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. In our in our standard here, we used to be the same as same as you with the two to four preferred between the two and six pound, the two and four preferred. But now we've changed it to the four and six four. preferred. Yeah. And I think that's a lot down to the whelp inside of things, just to, to keep them to things. So I would always say four and a half i would like it over that four the same as what you're saying just as not because a smaller bitch can't you know get there sure. just just because you feel like you're on the safe side of things you know yeah mm -hmm. that's true and i it's it's interesting i mean the united states judges don't tend to weigh enough and I often find I was, that, when that, I was. That's one of, of my question. Uh, some people are, some people want that uh, Chihuahua. You know, some 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 breeds we have to in in French. I know how to 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 do it. Wicket. You we measure them at the withers. Yes, the wicket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that we must install an habit to wait all the Chihuahua yeah. in dog shows? Yes. For me, yes. yes, for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we are really we are yeah. really passing this limit. Really. And more problem here in Europe, I found it's more problem that uh dog is going to junior class and it's already 2.6, 2.7. And we understand that as adult it will be 3.5 kilograms. Yeah. So it's so like um in Ukraine, it was a case in Ukraine because in Ukraine we, I never saw veteran Chihuahua in the ring. Problem <laughs> is that seriously, they got too big. They became very yeah. big, and problem is they they uh, were heavy. They were about three kilograms at two years old, and and up to six years old, there was no dogs in the ring because they too heavy. So. It's not possible for them even to walk properly with age. Yeah. But it means that if you start to weigh them all at the dog show, uh, you would like to have it and to have it in a mode very uh, okay. If it's if we say that the for example for us FCI it's three point zero the limit. If you have a dog three point out, three point one it's out. Eliana, you see it like for that? me, yes. Okay, Paula, the same. Yes, don't yeah. feed them. Yeah. So you can show them. <laughs> no, there is, there is, by the way, there is this joke in uh, Czech Republic uh, that uh, one of their club of Chihuahua, they don't accept dogs more than three kilograms for breeding. That's why uh, breeders under the, this club, they're not feeding their dogs to pass this breeding exam. Yeah. Oh, the dog must awful. be in the dog must be in condition to be yes uh, to be yes but to pass this breeding exam they're really not oh. feeding them or feeding with a half portion this is yeah already a little bit obvious for me too much it's too much but we need to find the 
harmony between show dog and breeding dog. For sure, yeah. female with age with liters can be more than three kilograms. We all agree. It's uh, yeah. it's like in humans. But okay, if you got this female, keep her at home if she's given your nice puppies, nice standard puppies. Yeah. Right. What, can you imagine to to check the weight of the dogs in UK shows? No, I mean it, it's a thing that we don't do here. Check the weight. But what you've got to do is through your own eyes, imagine the size of what, only through your own things, and from dogs that you've seen in the past, you, you get an image of what should be right. The last thing we want is to be weighing something that a tiny little dog could weigh so much, and a big dog, like we're just saying now, could weigh absolutely nothing, because it could be just keeping the weight down. So it's yeah. something that we really couldn't do, but it's all about the eye, isn't it? And yeah. Don't, don't... I, think, I think in the United States, the interesting thing is sometimes, like I'm hearing people say that in some places where uh, I believe uh, Alona said that, uh, you know, puppies are too big, even when they're in a junior class. In the United States, sometimes my concern is judges, I've seen it where they, have mentioned they've opted to leave a dog out because they thought it was too big, like not to place it very high, when that could be your winner. If you just put it on the scale and if it was clearly six pounds or under, they could reward that dog the breed or take it as far as they wanted in the class. And then there's yeah. times where I've seen dogs that were so big in the ring um, that it's it's hard to, to bite my tongue um, thinking that judges don't realize that's over six pounds and they do choose not to use the scales. And so when we were working with judges ed, oppor you know, opportunities for judges, um, I always tried to stress the fact that when you're in doubt in the United States and you're not sure how much that dog weighs, it looks like, well, maybe it could be, um, when in doubt, weigh it. And once you weigh the dog, um, you can opt to, you know, if the dog's in, you can put the dog up as far as you want. If you weigh it out, it's removed from the show ring. I think what someone else said was that dogs have to be a certain weight, you said, in the Czech Republic to be bred. Is that what it was? Because up to, three, here, up to three kilograms. Yeah. Here, some animals aren't shown because maybe I have kept, not many, because, you know, my mentor always warned me that if you keep a brood bitch, like that's going to be too big, way too much. Um you really want to be careful keeping another one like that because then you're going to have a line of animals that are all seven and a half pounds. Um, but we have occasionally kept bitches that were sitting at that six pound limit. And, um, you know, the AKC doesn't tell us that we can't breed them. We can breed an animal that's over six pounds. We just really shouldn't be showing it because it can be disqualified. Whereas I think what you said was they have to be so big to be bred. I have a funny also conversation one um, with Ukrainian breeder about that female should be big, big and long, because long female means plus two puppies. What? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I, yes. The way our standard measures and, from point of shoulder and, to point uh, of buttock, it's husband, a very compact uh, breed. With my husband, who is a um, diplomated uh, small animal reproduction, we also even would like to make a study, a statistic study about if, the, if it's true or no, because I heard it really all around Eastern Europe that longer female, chihuahua females should be longer because it makes more puppies, plus two puppies. Long okay. bitches make long puppies of yeah. both sexes. <laughs> 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 Many big males are not especially producing big puppies for I don't as females many. as well. Yeah, you have some big males that are producing. Uh, I had uh, to recall one male uh, recently. Uh, she was standard size. He was two point six kilograms, uh, five years old, so normal size at all. But each liter he gave me two, three puppies. 1.3, 1.4 kilograms as adults. Yeah. So, so yeah. I I think I, it was something he gave to his puppies. So that's why I recommend him because he was normal. 
a normal size female, bigger females, normal 1.3 to feel normal, but bigger females, he's standard size, but very small puppies. I I have a question. Uh, I have a question. Uh, who wants to answer? Will answer. But as some of you know, I I love Chihuahua books. I have a lot of Chihuahua books, and for what I see uh, in pictures, it seems that in the past we had more smaller Chihuahua than today's. Maybe not always more sound in anatomy, and. Some yes, some no. And my question is, can you relate a link with the improvement of the overall structure in the breed and the size? Um, I mean, that can, can we maybe not state, but can we say that sometimes uh, smaller dogs are maybe weak in construction than dogs a bit I think, bigger? I think having sure. the smallest... It, Go ahead. It, it, it's for sure because it's easier uh, to see a nice movement in bigger dogs because they have bigger bones. They have, uh, it, it's, it's just easier, even easier to breed them. Oh, you can have, uh, and you can have, you as, can have as for all rounder judges all around. around. As uh, for all rounder judge uh, all around Europe, they always will notice bigger dogs. Also because they are more used, you know, to bigger breeds. And uh, uh, it's difficult. No, no, maybe it's <laughs> in my country where I live, in, but it, it was really difficult to find small, nice construction. Because it was question of if it's very small, so I mean very thin bones, uh, not enough um, body shape, uh, uh, and uh, angles start to be different. Okay, Billy, you you were or Clive? Anyone yeah. else, Clive? Yeah, I was going to say about you. You say you're reading the books from the past, and you can see how much the Chihuahua has changed. On the whole, the head shape has changed since the past from the old books. And you can see more definition in the heads now to what it used to be. More muscled, more body tone to the dogs, yeah? Not saying that them dogs wasn't very special at the time, but you can see that they've changed, whether it's for the better or whether it's for the worse, I don't know. But you can see that there has been a massive change over the time. Standards change, you know, we have the guidelines, we follow these guidelines, and and this is what's this is this is the outcome of the guidelines. The guidelines are going to probably change again in another 20, 30 years. We're going to see a massive difference then as well, aren't we? Yeah. I would imagine. You know. I I think the hard part is some of the best dogs I've seen structurally moving and in my own personal kennel. I mean, my personal dogs, not just client dogs that I showed for others, but some of them, they all were in, a, in the range of being leaning towards the smaller. Um, I do think the, the hard thing for all Chihuahua breeders and everyone that's listening, um, you're to be commended for choosing Chihuahuas. It's probably one of the hardest breeds to breed because we do have smaller litter sizes. It's a tiny dog. Um Whenever you take anything and try and make it smaller, it's so much harder to do. And I can remember um, a friend who was an all-round judge. Uh, we were talking about her earlier before the seminar started. But, you know, Jane Kay was a famous dog show judge here in the United States and a dear friend who loved chihuahuas. She had them. Um, she was a Doberman breeder as well as a handler. And she would always say to me, like, if you breed a Doberman litter and you can't get one you like, um, you're not doing something right. And she said, but chihuahuas are so hard to breed. If you breed a litter and you get one that's a nice one, um, I just want to jump up and down and hug you. You know, it's a miracle. Uh, it's a hard breed to breed. And, uh, you know, we deal with small litter size, um, worrying about C-sections, worrying about this, things that maybe other breeders don't have to worry about. So it's very difficult. Um, but it is the smallest breed. I mean, the world's smallest breed and my fear about allowing 
the weight to increase in the United States, um, if that, that ever would happen, it's they're going to become another toy breed, just another dog in the toy group, as opposed to you take your eye and you go down the line and you see this little tiny dog and that's the Chihuahua. Okay. Thank you so much. I don't know if someone wants to add something about weight, otherwise we can jump on the Molera topic. So my first question was because we spoke about the weight. Regarding the weight, do you see a link with the size of the body and the size of the Molera? The size of no. the head? Molera, open the fontanel. The, the, the Molera, the fontanel, the hole they have on the, um, on the head. Do you see a no. link between the size, the weight of the dog, and the Molera? No. No, I think it's because we start to have Molera even in other breeds, so. Well, we've always had Molera in other breeds. I mean, as a handler, I've seen them in other toy breeds. Um, they're just not allowed in other toy breeds. Yes. Whereas, uh, in, in the United of, States. In which breed, um, like Pomeranians? Um, they're I've they're seen similar them. to by size. It's not a. Yeah, I've seen a Malera in in a, in several toy breeds. I've seen one in a Brussels Griffon years ago, um, a Pomeranian actually, uh, and uh, also a Papillon that uh, that I owned did not show, but I owned um, just a slight <laughs> one. Breed, <laughs> but uh, here in the clinic in our practice we have a lot of multiple. They're not so small, but they have Molera open. It. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the the statement so of the... even even their basic breeds, um, Poodle and um, Maltese Bichon Maltese, they have no Molera. But <laughs> so I don't think that it's related to the size of the dog. So speaking about the Molera, uh, in the F FCI standard, it's clearly written that an open Molera is subject to disqualification, to disqualify yeah. the dog. In the UK and the American standard, we have nothing written uh, about that. Yes, we do. Yes, it's um, written open. Our says they can or they cannot. It's basically yes. with or without. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not state as a point to for disqualification. No, it's with or without. You can have it or you don't. Basically, the judges don't have to look for it. It doesn't matter. It's the same here. We've yeah. we've we've got the um. We're fully aware about the Molera on the Chihuahua. It's part of the breed. We have to accept it. It's it's there. We don't feel for it. We don't particularly look for it. It's something that's in the breed. It's part of the Chihuahua. We just have to accept that. Okay. I, um, even... Probably it's uh, a lot of question for us, Miss Paula, <laughs> representer of FCI standard. <laughs> here, so here, here in Mexico, uh... they don't they don't check for Malera. I'm sorry, we're FCI. I, it's probably bad. I'm telling this, but. They don't check for Molera. <laughs> you do not have the judge slightly touching the no. head and noticing? No. Okay. Even judges that come from different countries of FCI do not check them. They don't. We have judges from Russia. We have judges from everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And nobody just goes, nobody does nothing. It's I do know of... I do know of American dogs that have gone overseas and been disqualified, even animals that have won at oh, yeah. like points at nationals. Um, I pulled up a book, which is kind of interesting, The Chihuahua. And inside is a very interesting, interesting excerpt. James Watson, who was an early pioneer in the breed, um, writes about his travels going around and collecting little chihuahuas, any little tiny dog found south of the border of the United States. And he mentions a visit to uh, a gentleman's wait, home. Wait, which and... page? What's the, the page number? Because I'm... on page 33, <laughs> if anybody else would, would like a copy no. that's on here, I'll gladly, if you just send me information, I'll send it to you, okay. of the speakers. Um, but he mentions in quotes, uh, 
As I have said, these little house dogs are of all shapes, varying as to size and many colors. I like the many color part. Um, as to these points, the Mexicans care little. His one indication of the purity of the breeding is the orifice in the center of the skull, the great peculiarity of this breed and found in no other. Um, that was a quote that he kept that was written prior to, that was said prior to 1914. Um, that's a long time ago. I'm going to go with with or without Malera. And uh, I've shown, I probably would not have, be able to show a dog FCI because every Chihuahua that I've shown, including the dogs that currently and have held best in show records in the United States, and every Chihuahua that I've shown for clients has had some kind of Malera. It might be small, and this book, I believe, also mentions it um, as well. I'm sure others do. I've seen it where they close up, like they start off kind of big, and then they get a little smaller. I don't know about you all, but have you had that where yeah. as the dog matures, the malaria closes up a little bit? Oh, yes. We hear we... we it does, sometimes it doesn't. We we hear, we, we, we hope that in time, maybe it closes. It's not something that we feel for. It's not something that we we don't expect judges to come in and start placed on the heads and carry on. We just accept that it's a feature of the breed. Some chihuahuas will have it. Some chihuahuas won't have it. Hopefully in time, it closes up. If you've got one that doesn't close up over a long time, then perhaps maybe if you're in the house or something, just be careful that there is a little bit of an open something there. But... It's not something that we actually are looking for because it's not part of our breed standard anymore, even though the feature we know is still there. Yeah? I, what I, about I, Italy? I, I have to say that for us that are breeding, showing, judging under FCI standard, it's a very, very um, delicate, sensitive point because officially it's written black on Your white. Your microphone, Billy. Yeah, okay. I yeah. know. It's really uh, written bla uh, black on white that uh, any chihuahua with uh, an open, open molera without explaining which size of it, because for even me, even age, even age or size must be disqualified. And hopefully, yes, this is hard. a real, real yeah. problem in, in, in yeah. our European FCI part of the standard because. Yeah. If I As can, exhibitor, yeah. If I can Joel. just uh, finish uh, for me, uh, for me, the um, I I cannot tell it uh, like uh, you are saying in UK and America that you even don't touch it because for me I don't know I have this really a bit since I have Chihuahua to check it I'm not pressing I'm just but uh, for me it's really important even if I'm not vet, because who I am to say what it's a sound or an unsound molera, but I have this feeling that I can just by touching, say if it's an acceptable or not molera, then it's something very difficult for myself to explain to someone else that is not what is acceptable for me, what is acceptable for you, for you, for you, because yeah. we have no uh, specific uh, size, millimeters written somewhere. We have no age state somewhere. And for me, some molera are okay. And some molera I have already touched some dogs with very heavy hold with multi hold So one here, two here, one Ooh. behind. And that's for me something unsound that we do not want in a dog show. And in the opposite- That's not a molera. <laughs> yeah. And the malaria is right here. <laughs> yeah, but you have some dogs with uh, other holes, and people say, "Ah, oh, it's uh... so." That's for not me, a malaria. It will, it will be. It will be perfect in the future if this uh, malaria topic could be more clear in the standard and maybe less. Uh, how do you say tranché uh, to be less um, radical? Right. Radical. Yes. Huh? Yeah. This less is really good. something we need yeah. to work on. Even as breeders, we need to make some guidelines or something because uh, in Eastern countries, I uh, had, I saw a lot of uh, not disqualification. What is really was surprising me, 
But for Molera, judges gave very good to a dog. And it was always a question for me. Okay, guys, you have Molera as disqualified uh, fault. So you don't accept it, so disqualified dog. If you accept it, so why it's very good? Yeah, yeah because he it would be... I wouldn't be able to show in Europe. And yeah. uh, I mean, literally, I've, and I've, uh, our kennel, you know, it's, it, it's, it's well over a hundred, you know, dogs that, you know, I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, literally going through them. And I've, when I first started checking, I've never shown a dog that didn't have some semblance, even if it was small, um, of a malaria. We've also, you know, both throughout the years, most of the dogs are in their upper teens. Um, you know, uh, the dog with the biggest malaria that I ever owned, the dog was 20 years old when he died and he could still walk. Um, and he had a fairly large one, I would say maybe even in adulthood, it was smaller than a dime, but it was still way bigger than the other ones that were just a little dop. Um, I almost wonder, being that I've never felt one, minus a, a a brood bitch, an eight pound brood bitch of ours that didn't have one. Um, I'd love to start feeling them because everything I've had my personal hands on, um, including times where I've judged sweepstakes for other people or just went over dogs for seminars when I was in charge of judges education or judged in Mexico. I mean, you almost can't help but like I've never felt one without one minus a brood bitch of mine. And like I've said before, here, we just accept it. It's been in the breed. Some do, some don't. We don't feel for it. We just accept that it's part of the breed. It's sometimes there, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... In my opinion, here in Europe, we really need to start to work on it because we already have statistical proof that size of molera or molera in general doesn't relate it to hydrocephaly, for example, uh, what was a main reason to forbid molera in the standard. Uh, personally, me, <laughs> I strongly believe that we have increased number of C-section because they start to work to um, take out molera from the breed. Sometimes, because it's it's like in humans, to pass, pet should a little bit close, to have a space to close and to open after. Because of the shape of the chihuahua head. It's a unique breed uh, with such shape. That's why I, I, I have not enough statistical data to make yeah, because uh, it was be interesting <laughs> to know how many uh, we, are how many we are checking on our females now we are really checking this and we are making our own statistic but do uh, you have a lot of puppies born without molera most of the chihuahua the molera close by time i have few i have few okay i have few that's why it's really interesting to check the statistic and honestly, I would like to make a call for breeders all around uh, even world just to have this statistic. And maybe this time we will be able to uh, clarify something in our standard, something like Molera, it's not good. OK, but we can accept it up to, I don't know, two years old, because in some countries uh, they have this um, something like puppy check before they will give pedigrees to puppies. And I know that in some countries, if puppy has not closed molera at eight weeks old, it's uh, without pedigree or uh, this uh, pedigree without breeding rights. And, and, and you know, you have to understand that some uh, judges that are new judges in the breed from the FC Highs, they have learned and they have done your exam reading and learning that a molera is a disqualifying fault. Yes. And we have some dog shows where you have, I don't know, 28 Chihuahua and 20 are disqualified. <laughs> I had yes. uh, officially I we, once, cannot, uh, we cannot blame these judges. They are doing properly what their job, yes. Is. Once I, think... I assisted to, to a new judge, new uh, new means in our breed judge, 
and uh, she was uh, happy to have to have breeder in her ring for assistance because she asked her, but what should I do because I have 30 dogs and 25 of them they have open molera I told her uh, I can't tell you because it will be technically not uh, the same way standard says but in breed, we accept it up to two years old and so on. So she was, ah, okay. She started to check it more carefully, asking age. With age, we know that Molera will close, will be smaller. We can't be sure about it, but yeah. and it's, still, it's still Chihuahua. It always have been in breed. The interesting thing when you're looking at what we read, like when we actually go to a book and find something that's, you know, old and read what the, the, the intention was behind the Chihuahua from the people that really were working to create the breed long before it was actually as, um, you know, this is prior to pedigree keeping. They're going out and looking for little dogs. Was that ex excerpt from James Watson when he was writing about visiting the McGoverns and the fact that way back when there were two features of the Chihuahua that people argued were the unique characteristics, of the breed that made them purebred. There was a faction that believed you had to have that hole or you were not purebred. So to me, historically, the malaria is a sign of purity. In other words, if it has a malaria, it's a Chihuahua. If it doesn't, but the standard now says with or without, basically don't look for it. The yeah. other thing was the tail, which has nothing to do with our conversation. But if you read in some of the old excerpts, many breeders believed that the unique tail of the Chihuahua was another feature that, um, you know, was, was basically something only of the Chihuahua and not of other breeds. Um, I heard about that though. A friend, actually a dog, a friend called me years ago and a dog that was winner's dog at our national specialty weekend. And it was a breeder judge, Pat Laracy, who's now deceased, but she was a woman that devoted her life to the Chihuahua Club of America and a very popular Chihuahua person. Um, I believe it was a dog that she rewarded at that specialty. And it was a gorgeous dog, a stunning animal. And I believe when he went to Europe, he was, the animal was DQ'd for having a malaria and, um, you know, for me, I was like, what? And all the times I've worked in judge education and everything else, I never once thought how different our standards are, that something that here we don't even pay attention to. And then you go over there and this otherwise beautiful little dog is disqualified for it. So it's definitely the perspective of FCI is so different yeah. than how and, maybe and, England sees And it. just to jump on it, as uh, someone wrote on the chat, Carlo Alvarez, maybe you know, Paula is from Mexico. He said, hello from Mexico. I remember that Germany was the country that began asking Mexico to change the standard about the Molera. Yep. And what right. Germany is. Yeah. And Germany. Probably <laughs> breeders are in real, in real trouble in this country because they start to be really into bad. They will simply forbid our breed and that's yeah, all. They, they have so many uh, breeds that are not allowed to be shown and they want now to ban the Dachshund. They are making not uh, uh, able to be shown. It's not a problem. They're Sorry. not allowed to. They want to ban the Sholos. Show yeah. Swinkly. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many years have they been in this world? Yeah. And they now are saying that they're going to be banned because they're hairless. The yes, native yes. breed of Mexico. And they suffer. Yeah. Yeah. So they've been suffering for how many years? It's before Christ. Mm -mm. It's <laughs> the oldest breed of the world. Mm. One of the oldest breeds of the world, and they want to ban them. It's mm. just, I, I, I think know. we I see know. it here too in the United States. There's people in certain breeds, they talk about things. I think the malaria, the hard part is. Um, I always look at what history tells me. And I just pulled one excerpt. I can pull a million more. I came armed with books and a magazine. 
Um, I just pulled one because I figured we didn't have a lot of time and I'm going to shut up for a minute and let someone else talk. But historically, <laughs> this is a trait that years ago, the, the people who were going in from the United States know Mexico is the, is the country of origin. And it was an honor to be there and to see the little Chihuahuas and the Sholos and be able to touch them when I was there presenting at their first native breed conference. But um, the breed was developed also in the United States where people went and brought the dogs and brought them here. And the one trait that you can read in several occasions that's documented in history, the one trait that makes the dog a Chihuahua is having a malaria. So to DQ something that you, that the original founders of the breed that were starting pedigrees and deciding what they were gonna do to make this breed you know, and maintain it and preserve it and keep it safe and protect it, um, they all felt that it was a trait that was, you know, not all, but but obviously enough people to write about it in books um, prior to 1914 felt that it was a trait that was um, a sign of purity. It made the dog a chihuahua to have a little hole in the head. Um, it scares me. I always worry about people worrying about health because we've had some really old dogs and, um, you know, like when I was breeding with Erica, my dogs were maybe you could say not quite as fortunate. They were very fortunate when I bred with her because she had young children. She's been a dear friend for a lifetime and she's very good at whelping puppies. But puppies being raised with young children, uh, soccer balls flew through the room and hit the puppies. Um, puppies were dressed up in clothes, were well, put up on sofas. <laughs> I can um, show you so many videos of why your children <laughs> Yeah, and I think the joy of it is that little Malera, those puppies survived kids. They survived two teenagers loving them and playing with them and running in the field and um, going out to look at goats and horses in the barn. And um, I really believe Chihuahuas, considering how long lived we are, even with the health problems that we know the breed has, we're pretty darn healthy and the malaria doesn't seem to be a problem, my opinion. And I agree yeah. with what Billy, I agree with what Billy's saying. Yeah. Our problem um, here in Europe that uh, our I, young judges, they're not reading history of the breed. Our young breeders, they're not reading history of the breed. They simply open the standard where you have disqualification called open malaria. That's all. Yeah, and I think I think we should respect that all of us have a different um, different view on that kind of thing, and and especially with judges, I think we've got to respect when you judge in that country, you've got to remember not to be looking for a malaria or that's disqualified, or you know you've got to bear it in mind if you're judging in a European country under the FCI that you are checking for that and it is a disqualification. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does make it hard. I almost wonder if FCI, and here's, I guess Paula could answer this, or maybe um, the FCI folk could. I'm curious as to why the FCI doesn't allow the the parent club of the, the country of origin to have say over the standard. Like I would assume FCI, we would take the Chihuahua and we would simply defer to the people of Mexico. Um, it is their breed. It belongs to them. There's nothing more amazing than standing there and looking at Chihuahuas and Cholos and seeing a pyramid in the distance. I did it once. Um, it was really humbling to think back and think this little dog that I love at home, um, you know, this is where we started. We got our start here. Uh, who can, is that something that, is there any, like, does Mexico, the country of Mexico being the country of origin, have more say than maybe a country that has no claim to the Chihuahua minus we breed them and show them? Well, it's supposed to every breed that is, um, every FCI breed, the the country from where the dog, the breed is from, supposedly does the standard and checks it and everything and all this. Um, I can't remember when the last standard check was, though, for FCI. 2019? 19, no, 2019, 19, uh, they changed it uh, minimal weight, but uh, Molera was uh, 2014, 14, I think. Yeah, 14. 
Well, but, then maybe they can do another. I don't know. Maybe maybe we should really make some working group between he and your uh, even with statistic data already that it's not so. Honestly, I I cannot remember which point have been used for the changement. Of course, it have been healthy for points. For sure. I don't know, which, <laughs> but I don't know which studies have been used to push and to press this. Uh, I know I remember that it was a big. Um, uh, I don't know the word in English. I, a big uh, poo poo poom in the Chihuahua world in the FCI because. From one day to another, you have to pass yes. to black and white. To retire all your and, dogs. And <laughs> of course, we do not have, uh, it's not like uh, we can close it by hand and, uh, okay, it's finished. We have solved the molera problem. So, yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, we even didn't have this transfer period. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, for me, uh, uh, an idea and a solution could be maybe in the future and maybe with the help of the International Chihuahua Club to create a, a group to maybe pro, uh, to discuss and to offer a new version of that, especially uh, I won't say that we have to say that all Molera must be acceptable because now we are in an opposite way with the FCI standard, but maybe having a age limit because for some judges, a puppy, a baby, three months with a molera is a, is subject to disqualification. It has no sense. And I have to tell you, we all have chihuahuas at home. We know how to touch them. But I have already seen judges pushing, pressing on yeah. their heads like, uh, like you want to... Uh, yeah, a, this a is the problem. Head. This is the problem sometimes we find with judges that come into our country, sometimes do that, and people think, oh, what is he doing? Or what is she doing, doing that? You what know? he's looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It's definitely a topic that once you leave your your world, your little, you know, once I leave the United States or someone from Europe would come to America, um, it's the one point. I think the weight, there's a little bit of difference. And, you know, you can kind of, like, it's sort of like tolerable to some degree. Um, the difference is the malaria is a really hot one because you have animals that could be, um, you know, animals that have made such success in one country couldn't win in another. And uh, it just is interesting to me how I was surprised years ago when when I heard the, the you know, about a dog that was here was a lovely dog um, that was disqualified when it went to Europe. It's interesting. Definitely. But even okay, they're not winning. It's not a problem because shows are not making uh, such big uh, impact to the breed. But this dog technically can't breed in countries where you have breeding exam. By standard, these dogs can't pass this breeding exam and they can't breed. Yes, here and we have. It's we a have... Pity, really pity to lose such kind of dogs for our breed. Here yeah. we have some breeding exam. It means it's one day during the, the life of the dog where you have to bring the dog, where an expert will tell you if yes or no, you can use it. Yeah. And Interesting here. I think with now that we're able to do all the health testing that we can do now, um, I really want to commend a lot of the breeders in the United States because a lot of the ladies that are breeding um, they're focused on that health testing. They're bringing their dogs in and any test that is suggested for chihuahuas, they're going ahead through OFA and doing those tests. Um, the malaria, the hard part for me is I've had dogs live to be really old, in some cases much older than others, and I've never had it be an issue where there was a, that there is no personal data that I have to show that that malaria affects that dog's life quality of life or longevity of life. Yeah. Um, so, so those two things, longe longevity and quality or intelligence. So it's not as if that, I've heard so many different myths about, well, if you have a hole in your head, your dog isn't gonna be, you, like they're not gonna be intelligent. I've heard they don't live long. I've heard they're hydrocephalic, um, you know, that they don't have normal lives. 
Um, like I said, our puppies were raised with two kids and went to soccer games and went to, you know, run in the fields with children and swam in the pool. And they lived pretty amazing lives. And, you know, kids are tough on dogs. They like to play with them. So those little dogs, that little hole in their head, they survived, you know, quite well in a home where they did, they lived with big dogs and they jumped on and off the sofa and on and off beds. And, um, you know, a bed to a Chihuahua is like jumping over a fence to a Doberman. <laughs> and that little Chihuahua with the hole in the head was able to jump up on our bed. And I might add my bed back then was pretty high off the wall because that was the style to look cool then. Uh, and my little dogs somehow found their way up and they found their way down onto the wood floors and nobody was injured. And that little hole didn't affect their ability to navigate my home. Uh, people, now it's already one hour we are speaking. So I think that the Molera topic was quite, um, and it, it, can, it, it can be another uh, round table only about Molera, but let's maybe finish the last uh, 15 minutes about teeth. I will just quickly um, uh, quote what it's written in the UK standard FCI and the American one, so you know exactly. So for USA, overshot or undershot or any distortion of the bite or jaw should be penalized as a serious fault. It's in the US, in the AKC standard. And level or scissors. Are accepted, accepted. <laughs> level or scissors in yeah. AKC. In the in UK, Joe strong with a perfect, regular, and complete scissor bite. So it sounds like uh, a description <laughs> for a breed uh, dentition. FCI scissor or or level bite, and then it's written overshot, undershot, as well as any other anomaly in position of upper or lower jaw must be strictly penalized. And in known of our standard, it is written the number of incisive. So um, to, 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 to. who wants to speak about teeth? Is there someone motivated? I can speak. Okay, let's go, Clive. So regarding what your standard is written, what can you say about you? Okay, so we ask for uh, a regular, complete scissor bite, which is the maxilla incisors overlapping the mandibula so the upper closely overlapping the lower so we ask what it what it says for a complete bite which we know a complete bite is six six with the four canines yeah we know it's not always possible to get this especially on a small dog yeah but if we've got a scissor bite Maybe not complete. We're heading in the right direction. But any mild collision or misalignment on that is either under or overshot, overbite. Our standard is very, very brief on that. But of course, we're wanting it to be a complete scissor bite if we can get it. It's very, very difficult on a small dog. But we have to take all the other virtues of the dog that's in front of us in question. If you're judging or if you're at home, if you've got a really nice dog that just happens to have slightly less teeth than the 6'6", six, six, there's no reason why you're not going to show it. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, do you have some judges in UK very picky counting the teeth or not? Yeah, what we find is that um, majority of the time we find people in other groups, maybe the gun dog group or the hound group, come in and want to have a look. They want to see six, six huge teeth. You're not going to find that. Okay. Um, some people would like to see the best with the six, six. We all want the, the guideline is there. That is That is what we really want to see. But it's not always possible on a small dog. We all know that. It's how close we can get to it that matters. And the fact that people are trying to get as close as possible is a good thing, yeah, it's already I would imagine. Yeah. How is the situation in USA regarding teeth in dog show, uh, Billy? Are the judges really looking for mm. a 6-6 six, six perfect scissor bite? Um. 
you know, it's 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 hard. Our standard says level or scissors. And I think judges are looking at it and it says serious fault, any distortion. So if the bite is not, is distorted in any way, it is a serious fault. Um, whenever judges would ask me, and I was in charge of judges ed for our parent club at the time, um, I always said they needed to make a decision that they could live with. In other words, my opinion isn't necessarily going to be your opinion in the sense that when have you ever seen an entry where there's perfect dogs? You're looking at all animals that have flaws because it says serious fault. Um, what's more serious of the most serious fault of all to me is lack of type. So when you have an animal in a breed ring and I don't recognize what breed it is because it's too long, it has a, you know, a headpiece that's not a chihuahua with a well apple dome skull. Are we going to reward that animal with rabbit ears um, a flat stop, no no top skull, and is four inches longer, you know, than it should be? Or are we going to reward the dog whose bite is slightly off? Um, as judges, you know, as breeders, we took the, the level or scissors seriously. I even was, as a breeder, even though the standard says I couldn't penalize it, even level bites, you know, I was careful with keeping them, um, and we still had problems with bites. I'm not acting like we never had bite problems. We had a lot of bite problems, even trying to breed against it, breed away from it. Um, a lot of times my bites in our line, our dogs would tend to be overshot as opposed to undershot. Mine was lacking the underjaw is where if I saw something in my own line, those little tiny puppies, the little, little ones, sometimes they'd be a little bit parrot mouth that we would put in pet homes that we wouldn't show. Judges sometimes just very quickly open the mouth and the dog could be overshot and they don't even notice. Um, I've, I've shown a few, uh, I handled for other people too, you know, um, I would open, they would open the bite or I would open the bite and very quickly they would look, um, literally as you were dropping the lips, they were back to examining the dog. And a lot of times overshot bites are missed. Um, to me, if you can see it from the outside, and I don't know about England, but I know a friend in England once told me that, if you're looking at a dog and from the outside, before you even open the mouth, you know there's a problem. That's yes, you one should, that- you should be able to see the jawline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, really this, the, the cheeks and jaws lean, a moderately pointed muzzle. We get these little squared off short <laughs> muzzles these big froggy heads that look like cantaloupes and not apple domed and little short square muzzles. Um, I'm not saying the bite's bad. I'm simply saying the expression it, that I see is atrocious before I open the mouth. But then when I open and you see open bites where the tongue sticks out, um, that's an occlusion issue where the teeth are preventing the tongue from being where really, it belongs. That's something really common in the breed, uh, open, uh, open bite with the tongue. Uh... Yeah. Very and common. Time. Yeah, and, and a lot of say I don't know, Aliona, what you think, but for me, the worst it's right, right, and it's something that Absolutely. you cannot. When they are a bit uh overshot, undershot, it can move during when they are growing. I have seen dogs changing a lot, but <sighs> a dry a dry mouth for me is the worst because the tongue will always push, push, push. Yeah, uh... and I think it's a structural deformity. Aliona, for you, what is uh, something that will stop you for uh, keeping a puppy regarding the teeth or a, a teenager? A teenager. Let's speak about teeth in general. In my country, Ukraine, we are close to Russia. Uh, was <laughs> and uh, thanks to Russian uh, way to judge dogs uh, in Chihuahua in Ukraine, it was. Only 6'6 six, six and only size bite. Even if in standard it was written level bite, uh, pincer, it was out of ring, it was even disqualification for the bite. Uh, overshot, undershot in Ukrainian shots, it was always disqualification. Even if, for example, Molera, no, <laughs> Molera, it's very good. <laughs> But bite is disqualification. It was really funny by standard point of view. Uh, for me, uh, mostly the most important uh, in teeth is health. 
I really would prefer dogs with six four but big strong teeth than very small, not in line six six. Mm-hmm. Always. Uh, and I always uh, check in uh, molars because for me it's always uh, also important because in the not in position it will give you not fully uh, closed mouth so tongue is out tongue with will um, this time uh, it will change angle of incisors so uh, dog will lose teeth more uh, in mm-hmm. in more young age mm-hmm. for me. Uh, First of all, it's health of the mouse. Then I start to check number. Uh, but health is also about angles and position of canines because if it's wrong position, it's already not healthy because you will have problem even uh, by some uh, articles, even um, to stone, how you call it? Heart, uh, heart uh, on French. Uh huh. On teeth, you have these stones on the teeth, dirty teeth with ah, this. Le tartre, le tartre. Oui, tartre. How do you call that when you have tartre. to remove the dirty tartre? Yeah, the tartre. With the Enamel? Tartre. Enamel? Yeah. Enamel. Yeah, plug, yeah. Plug, the dirty plugs, plugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even this, uh, I read a few articles that it's also because of. Um, occlusion and the wrong position of teeth so a dog can't uh, use properly and clean mechanically naturally properly teeth and it's not normal to uh, clean teeth with brush for dogs it's something we decide to do maybe to keep it healthy but it's not normally by, by nature so they have i really prefer six four nice uh, without any uh, problems of the line and so on. For me, it's more healthy than you have small six six sometimes and with a lot of tart. Mm-hmm. Also, what I really I I saw, I was really surprised and I was even shocked that sometimes people are afraid to take out milk teas. And again, from health why, point, why of are view, they afraid to remove the milky teeth? It's expensive. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. anesthesia. <laughs> and so on, so on, so on. For me, you can accept it in a young dog, but at the moment... Uh, I, saw, know, I saw it in dog of three years old. No. Mm. But the show. And, and it's not Checker. comfortable for the dog. Uh, oh, what about Mexico? Paolo, Is Mex- I- w- when you're looking at bites like Mexico, when you're looking at your litters, how do you, do you, what will you accept and what will you not? I like um, perfect scissor bite. I like. But we have teeth problems in Mexico. Bite problems. But will you stop uh, keeping a, a dog because he's, he's 6'4"? No. No, 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 no. No, no I, as, as long as it's scissors, I don't mind. In my opinion. Okay. Uh, level... I might, but it would be, you know. So like... if if you have to choose between a six six level or a six four scissor, you will choose six four scissor. Yeah, totally. But do you know many? I don't know how it is in your country, but here many people are afraid to keep a, a six four puppies because six four because they say ah we will be disqualified in dog show. But you don't disqualify here. <laughs> no, but here neither. I we have, still in Europe, yes. Six four is worry of, disqualification. I worry about not <laughs> with six over six. I always worry because and granted, um when I tell you if there's been a problem in the breed, it's been born in my house. I am not one of those people who has hidden the faults, you know, from the whelping box. If it can happen, I've had it happen here. If you breed enough, you're going to have every problem. The one thing I found was with 6-4, was it tended to creep up on you if you forgave it? And mm-hmm. I did forgive it. I had to because you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I hope that everyone understands that phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I ended up, you know, keeping things maybe I shouldn't have. I also found you mentioned health and like little tiny nubby teeth. That's a problem that I've always found tends to creep along. Um, you know, te tooth health does matter because we all know that problems with teeth lead to problems with the heart later. Um, but and even uh, with um, a reproduction point of view as well, we found the link. Yeah. Um, okay. I said, if the teeth are come very, very small, then it becomes almost micro dentition. Then it really just come a problem. Yeah. 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 And we've had a few winners like that. Uh, we've had a few dogs do a fair amount of winning where, you know, I always said, I wish they had like big teeth with a little more flesh around them and not so nubbed like little nubs, uh, you know, tiny teeth. Um, but I think like anything else, no dog is perfect. And as breeders, everyone out there, we're trying to put together, keep the things that we think uh, are going to improve our line. And unfortunately, um, another phrase that I hope everyone understands, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, we're constantly making decisions where um, you, if you want to fix, like I know years ago, we wanted to improve the domes on our dogs. And along the way, um, because of where I had to go to do that, the shoulders straightened a little. I mean, we're constantly working with flawed animals to try and create the perfect dog. And, um, you know, our standard has two seriouses in it. Uh, I don't know about other standards. I'd love to know. The only two places in our standard that are serious faults um, are blue in the eye, like of that of a Merle is a serious fault, you know, if it has blue in one or both eyes. And um, the idea of, you know, this bite is a serious fault if it's not level or scissors. Um, I don't know if that means you can't reward the animal as a judge because I don't know what animals are in the ring with the judge. Maybe they should withhold. Maybe the dog has enough virtue that it can have a serious fault and still be rewarded. Um, but bites are always the one thing that I struggle with because usually the best puppy is one that is six, four, or, you know, the teeth are a little smaller. And then you're like, well, God, I said, I'd never keep that. And I guess the message that I'll, my personal message is never say never. But it's how you say the uh, the story about the Doberman litter and the Chihuahua litter. In the Doberman, if you cannot uh, select one, it means you have done something wrong. And in toy breeds, especially Chihuahua, we do with what we have. And yeah. speaking about selection in Chihuahua, for me, it's very... Uh, I won't say it's impossible because we, we have done it and we continue to do it. But most of the time, we do with the worst of the litter and there is always something to accept and to deal with yeah. so yes billy you want to add something oh i just think it's hard i think every breeder needs to know that when they're frustrated and they're you know down and out ready to pull their hair out because the litter just didn't turn out the way they feel like it that there's plenty of us over the years that have had those moments where you know a frustration because it's a hard breed to breed i love chihuahuas and um, for everybody out there in the quest to breed a really good one, it's a, you know, it's quite the feat. Um, when I see a nice Chihuahua and I look in the catalog and see who the breeder is, um, that person gets a, you know, a pat on the back from me because it's a really hard job. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And uh, just before we finish, I will quickly um, have a, a quick uh, how do you say overview of our uh, discussion and then i will quickly read the question so uh, just to briefly summarize uh, about uh, the weight many of us or maybe all of us were uh, for uh, uh, like protocol of checking the weight in dog show yes <laughs> yes uh, about <laughs> about, uh, about Molera, um, uh, American and uh, British standard are more um, open without being so, how do you say? Uh, radical. Radical has FCI and maybe the one of the steps will be to create a start of working team with the ICC to create something new, at least to explain or to explain what we can tolerate, especially in young age, because disqualifying a puppy or a, a young dog is very um, not the solution for the breed. 
and about the teeth it was quite uh i think that everyone agreed that uh the 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 bite la morsure the position of the jaws is more most important uh than the numbers of teeth and the quality of the teeth is more important than that uh, we have one question from italy uh, martina is asking billy can you tell us the name of your book the, the green one, the complete chihuahua. Can you show the cover, please? Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> this book, the complete chihuahua. And just so you know, before you dig this book up, it's had several revisions, but um, I look for the last one. It uh, The book was first printed in 1947. And the last print that I know of was 1971. If Martina writes me or writes you, and then you contact me, I'll gladly give her some information on some really good reading material, other books. Um, the other thing about the book is the excerpt that I read, I believe the, the writer who actually was writing it, I believe it was written in 1914, if that would give her an idea of just how old some of that information is. Um, and there's a lot of great Chihuahua books out there. I mean, maybe what we could do is we could all create like a, maybe I see, maybe you guys could do that where you just have a library of, a list of suggested books and people would just we be able to go had on this that. idea we had we had this idea but uh, there is always question about uh rights outer rights yeah but, oh you um, mean sharing we can, the actual yes work. yes 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 no, so maybe for sure we can pre prepare names yes lists yeah just making um, the list I, yeah I maybe if I mean, you could even have a library where people would donate books, and then if someone wanted to, I, I know that I know that you have room in your house to store these, right? Um, where people, if they wanted to borrow it, and you were going to a show, you could bring it in hopes they would return it. Of course, yeah. but it is fun. I love the history stuff. If if one day I I I, I will win at the lottery, like a million and million of uh, money, I will open the first uh, Chihuahua Center, and you have <laughs> free and uh, open to everyone. There you go. Uh, yeah, we have another question. Uh, what do you think about the size of the muzzle and losing teeth? I I, I think that. Uh, is it means that we have now shorter muzzle and uh, no more space for a, a perfect dentition. Does someone want to add something about that? I can, I guess somebody else can as well. Um, moderately short in the United States, slightly pointed, it's not square. Slightly so it's not pointed, little... slightly pointed. Slightly pointed. Um, it's not a little flat block that when it turns to the side, it's a square here. And if it looks like a cantaloupe or an English toy, it's too much. We The breed has become, in some cases, they're so extreme, they're cartoonic to me. Um, we don't need to more so things. Um, you don't need to make the muzzle. It's moderately short. We talk about the dog being slightly longer than tall, and people take slight to be eight inches, and they have a dachshund. But yet the muzzle says moderately short. And we're breeding them where they have a little square blocked off muzzle. How do those teeth even fit in there? <laughs> and you know, I I, I have I, I'm not a long time judge, so I haven't seen a uh, thousand and thousand dogs. I have seen a lot of Chihuahua out of the ring as well. Uh, now we start to see Chihuahua six six, but in line, like uh, like we have in Shih Tzu or other uh, breeds. Yeah, and that's nice. That's, it, it it shows the process of making this the chihuahua muzzle shorter and shorter uh, yeah. for sure we are losing now teeth in chihuahua in your, younger age because uh muzzles shorter and shorter and shorter because to make muzzles shorter we need to go back to bulldogs mostly for that type of uh, mouse so we start to have problem not in incisors it can be still six six but we have problem of position of molars yeah another so oh, they ahead, start to turn mostly turn so you have not an, um not right occlusion of the teeth problem is start and problem with position and even tongue because i saw a few dogs with shorter model but still long tongue and tongue is uh, by, um, beating 
yes, teeth all the time. So they start uh, to move and they uh, dog losing teeth earlier. Yeah. I think Clive had something to say. Yeah, I was going to say the short, the short, the more, we're, we're exactly the same, uh, probably the same standard as you there. I mean, we, we want it a short muzzle. We don't want it too long, but slightly pointed, lean jaw. Lean That's jaw. Right. Cheeks and jaws lean. You don't want yeah. that pushed in. Fit. I mean, the more pushed in, the, the less likely you are to have a good dentition. Well, place and have a good dentition, you know? Alignment. Yeah. all going to start happening more the smaller the the, um, the the length of the muzzle is. I can't find, I, I'm looking for it right now in this book, but another good book, The Chihuahua by Anna Catherine Nicholas. Um, Anna Catherine was an amazing judge, toy judge. Her mother was a judge as well. Um, and a lady that judged a lot of Chihuahua specialties. She was rather popular with the cheap people. When we were talking, and I'm pretty sure she mentioned it in her book as well, but she tried to describe that, you know, in, in the United States, a papillon, their muzzle is one third the length of total head. So from nose to stop and then stop to occiput, the, the nose to stop is one third of that total head. Her idea of the ideal chihuahua was the muzzle was going to be slightly less than one thirds, two thirds. Um, the dog, and she always reminded me that any time we extremed things, when we more sewed them, um, they eventually started to look like a different breed. And the shorter you make that muzzle, once you get to a point that it's too short, it's not a chihuahua anymore. No. no. Now there's a long muzzle, though. <laughs> yeah, but that's a uh, muzzle is another topic. Maybe it will be a, a one evening round table. And you know what's sad, uh, Billy, is that many of people, they have never seen the correct Chihuahua head. And for us, what we see today in our rings, it's normal. And what, what is too short for us, it's normal for them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but that's another topic. And it's I, hard because our standard has words like moderately, slightly, there's no yeah. exact. And so everyone's going to take the word slightly longer than tall differently or moderately short differently. And what's moderate to me might not be moderate to Clive or yeah. what's slightly longer than tall to me. I might say that's a, that's too long. And you might say, ah, oh, no, that's pretty good. And that's okay. I guess it's just the way the standards worded. There's that a little bit of room for a little bit, little bit of room. Although Webster's dictionary kind of helps you know, figure out what slight means or moderate means. I, I will just, uh, I will say a few words before we leave. I will just read you the comment from Carol Lee Johnson. Wonderful learning experience. Thank you. From a newer judge that will be applying for Chihuahuas. So I'm very happy if we can, if this discussion could be helpful for uh, breeders, judges, anyone else. And uh, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you because for me, uh, I know you spend your time, you have your day, you have all your occupation and you, you have saved this time for us to be there for the International Chihuahua Club and just to see that Chihuahua people are so open-minded to speak together from USA, Mexico, Italy, UK, Switzerland, all together. Maybe for some people it means nothing, but for me it means a lot. And I, re I would like really, really, really to thank you all for accepting uh, this round table. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. It was nice to hear about other countries. Yes. And uh, the idea is to have all, all the time new people, but I will really enjoy to have you four like tonight uh, again another time because it was, uh, yeah, I really like this different point of view and we have uh, yeah we have uh, we have loved this breed with our own vision with our own standard in our side and finally we are all there for the same love so thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you thank you bye everyone bye bye bye, bye. bye. thank you bye bye bye, bye.